Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. It's time for Gwinnett Business Radio. And hello again, everybody, and welcome to Gwinnett Business Radio. Mike Salmon alongside Stephen Julian from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio in the beautiful Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. And we have two wonderful guests in the studio today. But before we bring them in, I just want to say hello to my friend Stephen Julian, who is very giddy and excited today because of a story you shared with me before the show today. I have no idea what you're talking about. Something about uh, taking your family somewhere. Ah, uh, yes. Well, uh, you know, our shows are timeless, but today is very important. Uh, AMC Theaters is opening back up today, and they are also celebrating the fact that they've been in business 100 years. And so they are selling tickets for 15 cents a piece for today. And they have a lot of good movies playing, some from the past, Back to the Future, Greece. We're going to see Empire Strikes Back. And you're all over those kind of deals. Uh, well, yes, and uh, I was worried they were going to sell out, so I bought them online. So, yes, I bought the tickets for 15 cents, and each ticket had about $2 added in service fees. But it was still well worth it because so it, it's still circa 1985 matinee prices. We're all going for under 10 bucks. So you're in an extra giddy, extra happy mood today. Yeah, I'm going to go see Empire Strikes Back this afternoon. The other reason I'm in a giddy, happy mood, Mike, is I want to remind everybody that our show does come to you from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studios. Love is what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Enjoy big savings and a hassle-free experience. At Subaru of Gwinnett, where people sell cars, visit SubaruofGwinnett.com and join their family today or come in and see the difference. Maybe you're already a Subaruist, then check out their Facebook page for the latest news, offers, and community events. All right, Stephen, our guests today are Tim Gowans. He is the owner and founder of Metro Wheels and Accessories. They are located over there in Marietta, but they do business here in Gwinnett County, so we've got them on our show as well. And Rick Crane, who is with Breakthrough Business Solutions. He's a master certified coach and trainer. Ooh. Yes. And there's a connection between both guests today. We'll get into that. Oh, man, that's a good tease, Mike. Yes. Let's get into it. So, Tim Gowans, Metro Wheels and Accessories. Thanks for joining us this morning. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. appreciate it. Tim, tell us about what you do and what you offer. I offer uh, a, a, a large portion of things. Metro Wheels was started in 1989, and uh, we started basically as an automotive factory wheel replacement company. Uh, wheels, hubcaps, and center caps, and then we branched out several years into the business uh, doing accessories, which is uh, what we mean by that is anything that you could add to the vehicle that was not added at the factory. So not necessarily on the wheels. Not necessarily on the wheels. We do all you know tonneau covers and bed liners and yeah, you I was, know, I was console gonna, gun safes that kind of thing. Yeah, I was going to say when you said anything that could be added, yeah, anything that's a wide range yes it is going back to when you first started adding the accessories what were some of the ones you kind of started with because i'm sure you didn't start with yeah. oh there's 782 yeah. let's start with all of them the, the the first one which is kind of funny to look back on it now was lighting that went under the car uh you remember the, the different colors the purples and the yeah. greens so you put these neon kits under the car and then when you're going down the road it looks like the car floating on some lights or something yeah, yeah. so that was one of our first you know, first adventures out there. but So let's go to present day. What are some of the top accessories we, that you're selling There's now? probably 5,000 SKUs, um, and, and we categorize them now. Like, for example, trucks would have its own category. There would be bed liners, wheel well, you know, bed liners, wheel well liners. Uh, we call them tonneau covers or a bed cover that covers the top that's lockable. We do interior floor mat systems through WeatherTech. We have gun safes that we provide, a large variety of stuff, lighting kits, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Of course, we do wheels and tires. You know, we do the custom crazy wheel and tire packages. Nice. Yeah, that sort of thing. Hey, if it touches the ground, you do it. That's right. That's right. And you've been in business how long now? I can't believe it. 31 years. Wow. A long time. There's got to be a reason you've been in business that long. Years. What's been the secret? Well, the secret has, is, has got a lot to do with determination and just absolute dogged determination. You know, I'm not going to be taken out. Uh, that's kind of the, the quick answer. We have long answers that we could give, but I think that's probably our the, just dogged determination. And, and also good friends like Rick Crane, who's helped us along the way with business principles. Uh, I think that that's been a big, big part of it is having the right foundations and the right values. And, uh, you know, Rick has been a big part of that for us. And yeah. everything you bring up right now, it has no, nothing to do with the product or the service. Yeah, it really, you it, know, it's, it's I, you the know, mindset. Here's something. So somebody told me something one time. They said, it doesn't matter if you sell pencils or airplanes. It has everything to do with your principles that you do your business on. Mm. And that stuck with me. 
and that's been a, a big a big part of our success is understanding the basis you know the foundation that the good business good businesses are built on when you talk about uh, when you talk about the fact that determination has been one of the biggest factors to kind of make it and and be in business as long as you have I would imagine to go along with that that determination is needed when things haven't gone according oh, yeah. to plan. Oh, yeah. So what are some of the things you've learned from some of the mis either mistakes or just mm, bad circumstances? Yeah, that's a good question. So one of the things that, and I, I really, I, I really do want to attribute Rick's, uh, my friend here who's with us today. He helped me through this period. Um, after being in business for a long time, with all kinds of uh, different kinds of management people underneath me that have responsibilities, I realized that these managers didn't share the same basis and core values as I, as I was very adamant on. And as a result of that, there were many years that we were idle because they didn't share that same basis. You know, our base, my basis, um, is you know seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all of these things will be added to you well my managers didn't necessarily believe that i mean they believed in the things you know the success of business the money the whatever you know the things are rather than making the first place the first place which is which is honoring god and, and what we do <coughs> so so rick and i got together and we made some hard management changes, which I love these, these guys. Um, but that was one of the biggest mistakes was allowing my leadership team to be in position with a different basis. You understand what I'm saying? And when we got our, when we got our values aligned, that's when my business really started doing much, much better. This may be a question that maybe Rick can chime in and answer better than you can, or, or you. Or, but it's directed towards you, and, and that is when you have when you're in that situation where the values and everything just don't quite align. Is it easier to release those people and find new people that come in and have the same value and thought processes, or is it easier and better to try to train the ones you have to get them to think the way you want them Good to think? Good question. I, I know Rick has something, but before you jump in, Rick, I want to say something about that. It, we gave the individual a year to change. We laid it out clearly what we wanted. And, and the facts are that I learned, another mistake that I guess you could say that I learned from, people generally don't change. People are what they are. They may appear to be something to you when you're talking to them face to face, but people are what they are. And you fundamentally don't really change that. So, so my answer was we learned that you can't typically change someone's core values to match yours you have to find someone who matches yours and you know another man another one one of my mentors said there you know there are some things worse than a vacancy there are some things worse than a vacancy and uh that was hard for me i have to tell you and rick really helped us through that it was hard for me to get to get to let someone go that i genuinely cared for and it had helped me through a lot of seasons you know to find someone that we currently have who matches our, our values, you know, perfectly. So, Rick, do you have any? I was going to say, and now Rick Cram, <laughs> wondering if Rick, uh, anything you want to chime in on Mike's question there? So, Tim, what was the result of that in the yesterday or this last week? What happened? Well, the the result was is that, and it's one of my questions. I think you're probably going to ask is how have we fared through the coronavirus? Uh, well, we've done great. We've done really, really, re really quite well because everyone's aligned. It's like the train is on the track. You know, there's no there's no friction between what we all want as a as a management team. And so, as a result, we've been we've been great. We've been doing really well. It's and and there's so many pictures in business and so many uh, wordings of everybody kind of pulling in the same direction yeah. and everybody kind of mm -hmm. heading down the same path. Um, and, and we always kind of joke on Gwinnett Business Radio that you're not going to get any Mike Wallace type questions. And part of the joke of that is the time reference. Everybody then knows how old Mike and I are because we're saying Mike Wallace type <laughs> right, questions. Right, right. But, um, you know, so it, it, I guess I do want to ask, based on the fact that you said, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you as well. In, in aligning, you're not necessarily saying you had to find someone 
who uh, was absolutely the same yeah. faith, but at least recognized first right. things first. So talk a little bit more about yeah, those first sure. things first and what you mean by you, that. You, you know, united hearts don't have to always agree. Amen. Okay. And what I mean by that is that, you know, my management team that I have in place now, there are little things that we don't agree on, but it's not, it's not an issue. It's not like a core value issue. Um, you know, like one of the values that, that I'm very adamant about at my company is when I'm I'm paying them for their time, I expect to get value back for what I'm paying for. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a core value. It's you know it's just an ethical thing that they're supposed to pu- supply me with value for what I'm paying them for. Correct. Okay, and the prior you know management team didn't necessarily believe that. When I walked away, and it's, when I wasn't in the room, then it's hey, it's playtime. Just just do what we want to. The and, boss and, is gone, and that's a core value of yes. if I can get a little bit more advantage on my side yes. in time. Oh, yeah. I'm getting paid to not necessarily yeah. work as hard. So let me explain the, the, the seek ye first the kingdom of God and his sure. righteousness and sure. all these things will be added to you. What I mean by that is, is when someone un- honestly believes that, okay, when I'm in the room or whether I'm not in the room, doesn't matter because their goal is not to please me. You're talking about integrity. Yeah. yeah. Their goal is to please the Lord who's yeah. watching everything. And, and I would imagine if that's also your core value, then when it comes to the customers, the yeah, clients, you're right. talking about putting them first yes. over and above everything else because that's the yes. right way to do business. Yes. I'll tell you a for example. Yep. And, and okay, uh, we were I was personally running the CNC lathe, which is a big machine that, that does work on wheel wheel repair, fixes wheels. And uh, I remember I had this was the last wheel, uh, and it was the very last. You know, I'm like finally going to get this set done. And I was taking the, the bolts out that attach it to the machine. And the bolt fell and made a little mark on the inside of the area that I had just cut with a lathe. And I could have skirted over that. I could have probably powder coated the wheel and gone on from there. But what kept me from doing that was the fact that I knew that God had seen what, what had happened. Right. It was, you know, if you're faithful in the small things, You'll be faithful in the big things, too. And that's not the value that the person was paying for who was going to buy that That's right. That wheel. They were paying me for me to give them the absolute maximum value that I could provide them, which meant that for me personally, it doesn't matter. The goal was not to, pl- to please the customer, although that was the result. The goal was to please the Lord who was watching me. Does that make sense? Amen. So well, my it's, leader, what you, it's what you do when people aren't watching you. That's right. You are what you are when no one's watching. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm saying to you is that having a leadership that understands that, that yep. operates, that has been operating in that for yep. years for themselves yep. prior to coming to work for me was the secret for me in my business in it succeeding. Let me back up, and we're talking with Tim Gowans. He is the, uh, the founder and the owner of Metro Wheels and Accessories located in Marietta, Georgia. Um with your principles and your values and the way you do work, you could have gone into any area. Mm-hmm. As you said, you could have done pencils. <laughs> yeah. Pencils if you wanted to. Pencils or airplanes. Wouldn't, right. wouldn't have recommended pencils or right. airplanes unless you had a lot of money. Right. Why wheels and accessories? What got you well, in that area? It's a great story. It really is a good story. If, if we've got time, I'd like to quickly go, go through Go for it. Okay, hey, you're so. just cutting into Rick's time, so the heck with the Rick. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. we'll bring, him back, <laughs> bring him back another Sorry. time. This is great for me. <laughs> okay. So I was in college, and, and I had no financial help. We, this was way a long time ago before they had, you know, the Zell Miller or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I was at Southern Tech and uh, was hating school, I just really hated. You know, I was not a student. I was entrepreneurial. I was always just, what can I do for myself, you know, kind of thing. And a friend of mine who had just graduated from Notre Dame was selling hubcaps, making $100,000 a year selling hubcaps in 1989. Now, that's a lot of money. I mean, it's a lot of money now, well, but that's a lot, a lot of, of money, money in yeah. 1989. And he told me, he says, Tim, I know you're, you know, you're, I was studying to be an engineer. Um, and he said, Tim, I, I, have, uh, I have this idea. I get these phone calls all day for people wanting to, replace their damaged wheels they call me all the time he says what about what about you trying that as a business i'm like hey i'm looking for something okay i didn't know anything about wheels i didn't know anything about business i didn't know anything i was 20 i was 20 years old and uh so i I borrowed a hundred dollars from my mom because i didn't have a hundred dollars i borrowed a hundred dollars from my mom i got twenty dollars in business cards 
I think my business license was twenty dollars. So, the, so now you're down to sixty dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sixty dollars. I went out to all the the um, tire shops and um, gas stations and asked if I could buy their scrap wheels, and then I bought a fifteen dollar book that referenced the the wheels. So with, uh, during my lunch break, I was at uh, I was a mechanical estimator. So for my hour lunch break, I would go around to all the tire shops in Marietta, hand them my card, and say, "Hey, I'm in the wheel business." Call me if you need something. And I had a, a answering machine at the house. Remember those back in the day? And I, said, I do. Thank you for calling Metro Wheels and Accessories Incorporated. You know, that kind of, you know, using my, my voice to make it sound like I was something when I really wasn't. And lo and behold, I started getting these calls four or five a day. You'd come home and the red light yeah. would be flashing, right? Yeah, it would yeah, be yeah. flashing. Like, There's the reference. I got? So they would be requesting for wheels for their, for their customers because they can't put new sets of tires on damaged wheels. So. It was a niche market that I discovered. So anyway, long story short, um, I got to, I quit my, I quit college, I, I quit my job, and then I got a job delivering pizzas at night. And during the day, I worked my wheel business. And three months into it, if if you ca- I calculated it out, three months into doing my 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 business, I figured I could make more money than an engineer, a graduated engineer, which is what I was going for. Yeah. Uh, than I could as a as a wheel salesman. Dogged so determination. Dogged determination. Did you pay your mom back? I did. I did. <laughs> did a little bit of interest, I, told. I did. And, and, back, I did. and you th- look back now and you th- go, I would never do that today yeah. because we're older and supposedly yeah. wiser. But back then we were young. You were 20, right. 21 20. years old, yeah. naive. Yeah. The, the whole world is there at your, at your beck and That's call. Right. You don't even think about trying stuff like that because I think about the things mm-hmm. I did then. It's like, Mm-hmm. You know, the chances of success, but you don't know any better. You don't yeah. have that world experience, which could be a good thing. Yeah, it was. I, I didn't have any kind of a family member saying, Tim, you know, right. this is stupid. I have right. one guy, you know, my uncle. <laughs> it's interesting, 10 years later, he wants to buy my company. But, uh, <laughs> but my uncle was, it was, not against, was against it. But, but the Lord just took my dogged determination, I guess, uh, along with, his providence in putting different people into my life, Rick being one of them. Well, and, me. and if I can speak, you know, Mike, you talked about, you know, kind of being naive and, and a lot of other good things. But the reality was you were risking your time. Right. And you were risking 100 bucks from your mom that you probably thought, even if I can't pay her back out of the business, I'll give her my tips from the pizza. And yeah. that was the other thing. Yeah. You also kept a, you kept something at night right. that was keeping cash flow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you actually created a relatively low risk when right. you put it in the eternal right. scheme of things other than your time. That's right. And if there ever was a time to do that, it was mm-hmm. that. And, and it was a business that didn't require. I'm sure you could have done that for ten thousand oh, dollars and yeah. spru- uh, spruced up this and gotten yes. an office and got mm-hmm. but what you did was what do i exactly need and it yeah. was relationships hard work time right. energy right. and then right. do a good job that and, was the other and, thing. another thing too guys is i for about two years i didn't touch any money that i made i put all the money that i made from the business in the bank account and you were living on the pizza money. and i was living on the other thing pizza and whatever else i could do to yeah. generate money so that when the time came to actually get into a building, ah. I had saved my money and I didn't eat the seed, is what I say. I didn't take stick my hand in the bag of seed and eat it. I knew I had to save that to plant it to create something for myself in the future. So that was another principle. And that's a great lesson to learn that even when times are going well, you don't all of a sudden right. just start spending no. a lot of money because you don't know when those hard times might that's be right. right around the corner. Yeah. And that was fundamentally a, a big principle that – that we operated on is is learn to live below your means yeah you know don't don't eat your seed you know don't but don't be so materialistically focused on things and cars and houses and whatever that that you you let that drive you to making bad business decisions you know my like i said all along you know seek you first the kingdom of god and all these things will be added to you make that the priority first Instead of it's kind of a hand, it's, it's it's two sides to the same coin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be, uh, we want to bring Rick into the conversation, but before we we go full fledged with Rick, Tim, tell us where your location is exactly. Yes. Is uh, you know what we'll see if we were to walk in your doors. What's mm-hmm. on site there, and okay. and the, the areas that you do service. Sure, sure. Uh, the address is 1093 South Cobb Drive, Marietta 30060. It's down past Lockheed on South Cobb Drive. The phone number is 770-423-0440. 
The website is www.metrowheels.net, not .com, but .net. Uh, when you get to Metro Wheels, it's right on the main road there. Uh, we've got a brand new showroom. We've just redone it, by the way, with cash. We did we didn't go financing that, but we we redid the whole showroom. It's really beautiful. It's full of custom wheels. We've got a whole section for accessories. Um, all of our employees are you know are there ready to help. We've got I think we've got 17 employees, something like that. I, I got to correct you. You didn't do it with cash. You did it with your seat. <laughs> that's I mean, right. That's on. right. That's right. Use the seed wisely. And what's, right. what's really cool, and we appreciate you coming today, and, and, and thank you, Rick, for, for bringing Tim, is, is you know, we love to talk business. We have sure. small business leaders. We have entrepreneurs. We have large business owners and leaders that listen to this program. Mm -hmm. And we, we talked about the wheels and accessories for a few minutes, but then we really got into the nuts and bolts of, yeah. of running a successful business. And hearing your story was, 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 thank, was wonderful. So thank you for sharing that with well, us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Let's give the website one more time. Yes, www.metrowheels.net. All right. Stephen, before we bring Rick on and hear Rick's story, I know you want to share something about a fun thing. Absolutely. So we uh, started the show reminding everybody that we come from the Subaru Gwinnett Studios. But uh, And interesting, we brought Metro Wheels dot uh, net in here because if you uh the other thing that you do is wheels are on the bottom of your car right and you want to drive so want to remind everybody that they can go for a drive at the bmw performance center an open track the ultimate driving machine and you in the driver's seat this is not a fantasy you're at the bmw performance center let's drive that's uh that's <laughs> my little tagline that he added call in or book online and get a 20 percent discount that's what we should really focus on a 20 percent discount if you use the code 20 rxt 20 that's 20 rxt 20 for more information or to book your experience visit bmwperformancecenter.com or call or call 888-345-4 bmw to reserve your seat now and don't forget the discount code is 20 rxt 20 and I had a chance on Monday to go up there to Greer, South Carolina. It's about an hour and a half drive, if not if that long, from, from Atlanta and drive some BMWs around a track as fast as I could and wear out some of those tires and wheels. And it was it was an amazing experience. Your hair is still messed up. And I'm still <laughs> jealous because you actually have hair. So it's still a little messed up. Great for team, great build, experience. team building and things like that. So give them a call at the BMW Performance Center in Greer, South Carolina. So um, Rick Crane is also with us. We've been talking about him with Breakthrough Business Solutions. And we've already had a great testimonial uh, from Tim here about the work that Rick does. But Rick, give us a kind of a broad overview of what your company does and what you do on a daily basis. Well, first of all, uh, hello, Mike. Good to see you. Steve. Uh, Tim. Yep. Uh, yeah, we, I may uh, own a small business coaching and consulting firm practice, and we specialize in fast growth companies. Fast growth meaning the growth part is the mindset, and the fast growth is, you know, no moss or grass is going to grow under our feet. We're going to keep moving forward, not look at the past, fix some things, move forward. And a lot of that encourages the business owners like Tim to maybe have to reinvent themselves a little bit in order to get through those barriers to success. So when you talk about fast growth, I'm sure you are talking about companies that are going through a period of fast growth, but you're also kind of talking about companies who say, I need that fast growth. I need to do some things to get into that, correct? Yes, business owners are great at building a business. They're also great at tearing them down so uh it's getting through those barriers wherever those barriers might be to get to the next level in their business it could be from two hundred thousand to five hundred thousand it could be from a half a million to a million and it gets greater from there but whatever their dreams and goals are is to take them from where they are to where they want to be and uh, the company, uh, your company is Breakthrough Business Solutions, and you are a master certified coach trainer. I, I think every business owner who's listening, especially those who've networked for any amount of time, has met someone who says, oh, I'm a trainer. Oh, I'm a coach. Oh, I'm a so I, I want you to kind of give us your credentials, kind of talk about the certification or that and, and maybe just, you know, what is different about you from from uh, maybe others that people have met who say hey i'm a coach sure so uh when i came out of big corporate okay uh i did become certified as a business coach went through the school paid the money got certified 
got the systems, got the knowledge, and got the support I needed. Then a couple years later, I went for my certification in executive coaching. Okay, so there, more money invested in myself, upgrade my credentials, and uh, explode to a whole new level of coaching through uh, the C-suite. And then from there, the newly formed MCCT, Master Certified Coach Trainer, was another investment that probably puts me in 1% of coaches in the world who have that certification. So in other words, what it means is, is that I can bring and certify other coaches. I can take them through a program and certify them as a coach, which means I can bring a culture of coaching into your company. How do you engage with your client? In other words, you uh, Tim has spoken very highly about the work you did with his company. When you come in, you fix things up, you get them going. Do you, do you stay on board as a consultant, or is it kind of a one-time I fix it, then I move on? How, how do you engage with your clients? And I'm probably going to guess that there's different levels of, of that engagement. Well, even though Tim and I worked together for over a year, uh, I still consider him a client. And he will call me from time to time and we'll get together from time to time and we'll meet up socially from time to time as Tim is a very accomplished musician and I'll go to some of his concerts. So uh, so I stay connected with my clients and as a result, they refer others to me. And so that is basically how I grow my business is re I'm a referral based business only. I've stopped all marketing. You can see my website is down for the moment. Doesn't affect my business one bit. So, um, so it's really uh, a good opportunity to work with business owners that have the mindset that I interview them on. So you might think that that my clients choose me, I choose my clients. And when it comes to coaching, um, I guess let me ask this question. What are some of the services? If someone were to engage you, uh, is it all going to be just, hey, let's talk about it? Are there some other services on top of coaching or as a part of coaching that people wouldn't think, oh, wait a minute, I didn't think I was going to get this if I got a coach? So there's various levels of coaching, and the first level might be the the – the level that we really need to make some changes in your business to get it to the future, to get long-term growth. So I have clients that have been with me from anywhere from four to seven years in that capacity. But then there's the clients that, that hey, I'm there, but I wanna continue coaching. So I have a maintenance program to do that, okay? Which is less often yet valuable. And then I have customized workshop and development packages for employees, executives, managers, and I look at where those are needed in the business and together with the owner or the business leader, we decide on what's needed and then I design those classes myself. And especially you were saying because of the, and, and I remember you said you're in the 1%. You say 1% nowadays. Everybody locks uh, on to that. Uh, At least I did. Yeah. But it, that 1% is that you can actually train other coaches. So in a larger organization, larger company, it might be that you're helping train the coach who's going to stay in the company doing other things, but also the coaching. But what I found also interesting is you've got all these certifications, you came out of corporate, you, you've you gotten to where you can do coaching on an executive level, and that's a part of your business, but it sounds like you're really focused on that smaller business, that, that kind of small business mentality. Talk a little, I mean, and I don't want to say to the exclusion of everything else, but that, is there more passion there? Is it just that you see that, wow, there's such a need in the small business community? Well, that's that's a great question. When, when you come up through a large large fortune company and I started in that company as a janitor and then ended up as vice president of Southeast responsible for approximately $300 million in revenue on the operation side. So, uh, so from, from janitor to vice president, you kind of see the evolution of business through all those steps. And one of my jobs was when I became a, uh, an executive in the company was I had to move around the country 
to gain more opportunity. And what I was doing is opening up new data centers for the company. So I had to start businesses from scratch and then help grow them to where I could go on and do the next one, become self-sufficient, have leaders in place, the right employees, every stitch of furniture, all the processes, procedures, everything fell under my realm. And that was the greatest training you can get. And for a company that I worked for to allow me to do that, was was tremendous so i came out uh, of course when things started consolidating and i saw the creativity going with it that i decided to come out in 2005 and every year in a large corporation it's give me 10 percent, give me 10 percent, cut 10 percent every year you know that's the famous jack welsh winning book and so uh i wanted to come out and help companies where We've got to hire employees. We've got to add money. We've got to get to where we need to be uh, by through growth and expansion, not through cutting back and for the stock market and for the shareholders. So that's all good because you learn a lot about business doing that. And there's a lot of things that you can bring from what I've done to start up companies within that company in various cities uh, to bring to small businesses and help them grow. Mike, I think we just got a free lesson from a certified master coach. <laughs> we we have learned that Rick Crane's got some street cred. <laughs> and and it's funny, you said that you learned from setting up those data centers, but I also heard in that starting as a janitor, you learn every single facet of the business. Janitor to warehouse yeah. to com computer operations, delivery, and all the way up through management wow. from there. Nobody can say, you don't get it. You don't know what I'm going through. You do because you've yeah, been I scrub there. toilets. I scrub it. the toilets. <laughs> I know who you are. Yeah. By and the way, I know what you do. After the show, Rick, by the way, the, the bathroom next door needs a little cleaning. So if you've got a few minutes to stick around. Breakthrough Business Solutions is the name of the company. And, and Rick, you're based in Atlanta, but uh, your, your world of expertise, how far do your clients go? Can you serve clients outside the Atlanta metro area? Uh, Iowa, Washington, D.C. Um, so you do a lot of Zoom. You get on a plane, whatever the case may be. That's right. And so let me, we asked uh, we asked Tim this a little bit about the current situation. Of course, now the number one topic on everybody's mind is this pandemic and and what we're doing in business. Um, I imagine that's become a big part of what you're doing with your current clients and potential new clients. That's right. Talk a little bit. Uh, and unfortunately, you did your you did your awesome exposition on janitor to VP and learning how to work with small businesses. But can you give a couple minutes on kind of what what business owners need to be focused on during this particular uh, weird time we're going through? So in, in 2020, successful business owners have overcome two main problems that we face today. And I say that in the current tense, uh, text because uh, that is what success is made out of. So they are successful because they've overcome these two issues. One is they've navigated their company through the shutdown and they've done it and they continue to do so over and over again, navigating, changing, making adjustments wherever and whenever possible. So they're staying on top of the business conditions and making adjustments to their business, number one. Number two is you have to be in the mode of relaunching your business. Your target market, whenever the economy shrinks, which happens during the economic downturns, who benefits but the big companies? They eat up all the business because they can afford to get it and it's cheaper, they can make it cheaper, and the small business owner being shut down or losing business because of the tight spending in the market. So now you've got to reevaluate your target market as a business owner and say, do we want to continue to service here or do we need to move our business here? And that takes a complete, as in Tim's case, cultural change. It, it doesn't just say, we're going to start marketing the big business you've got to make you've got to change your whole company to do that so those are the two areas that i'm seeing is being able to navigate and then being able to pivot to this new target market before you get so far behind that others are launching new businesses and you know great businesses are made during downturns right 
Yeah, great stuff. Uh, Rick, we are running up against the clock now. We could talk forever, so maybe we'll talk about having you come back, maybe with another uh, testimonial from another great client of yours. But for those that would like to find out more about you, I know your website's down now. We still want to give it because, who knows, they may be listening a month from now after this podcast is out and you'll be up and running then. But uh, give us any contact information, best way to find out more about your services and what you do for those that want to reach out to you. So... uh Email is and and the website is www.fastbts.com. B is in boy, T is in Tom, S is in Sam. Breakthrough Solutions, fastbts.com. Uh, phone number is four zero four two one seven nine nine two four, and you can find me on LinkedIn, Rick Crane on LinkedIn, and you'll see that I have a Radio X uh, sign in the background in my photo. So that's me. And Crane is C-R-A-I-N. I got another thing people can do. They can go to MetroWheels.net, get connected to Tim Gowans, and ask him how to get in touch with Rick Crane and how Rick has helped his business. That's right. So there Glad you go. to do that. Absolutely. And before we go, I, I want to ask one last question for each of you. It's the same question. For those entrepreneurs out there, people that maybe – like you, Tim, they're thinking about, I want to go in for business myself. I don't want to be in the corporate world. You know, Rick, you started your own business as well, coming out of the corporate world. I want to start my own business. Maybe a piece of advice to give to that person that right now thinks they want to do it themselves, but they're a little shy. They're a little afraid to take the risk, take the chance. What advice, a little piece of advice would you give them at this point in their career? You want to go first, Rick? Well, uh, there's three mindsets in business ownership. The first one is you're self-employed. You started your business, you're really self-employed, you bought yourself a job. And when you buy yourself a job, what you do is tell yourself, my income depends on the work that I do. Then you graduate and hire a couple of people, okay? And you become a business manager, okay? You still own the business, but you're just a business manager. So now, my income depends on the work I sell and the work I do, and you help me do some of that work. So the business owner's mindset is, my income depends on the work you sell and the work you do. And that's the part that whenever we, uh, whenever a business owner is looking at where they wanna be from where they are, they need to know that they do not, they, they cannot be a part of that success as far as being involved in all the day-to-day -day business. They have to move back, get out of the way, and build a real business that works without them. So you may not, you, you may pre produce widgets. You're not producing the widgets anymore. You're running the business. That's right. It's a big mindset shift, and we have to look at skills, abilities, behaviors, and all of those things come into play. So you got to think about that because if you're saying, I like building my widgets. That's what I love to do. I want to be that hands-on guy. You may not want to be that business owner then so so one one client told me that the biggest shift in her mindset to be, go from where they were to great success now was that i made a comment to her that you need to or you should look at or you should want to build business with as much passion as you have for what you're producing once you look at I want to build this and this is what my passion is you have made the the switch has turned from b owning a job and owning a business great stuff and tim yeah i think uh, as i said on the front side that determination is the is the blood flow i mean it really is without determination you're gonna you're gonna fail i mean that's just my thoughts so if you my advice would be think of uh think of it at like this if if money was not an issue you had millions of dollars in the bank what would you want to do with your life whatever it is that that passion whatever that is for that person is going to provide them the determination that they need to accomplish it so i, I would say to you that don't let the things of this world be the determining factor let it be the, what you're passionate about because if you don't have a passion about whatever it is that you're doing you're not going to have the determination to carry it out to finish to go across the finish line and eventually step up be able to step away from the business and do some other things that's what i've been able to accomplish like for example i'm a consultant now for ford motor company as a an accessory consultant 
I have uh, I have a lot of I have all the the dealerships in the state of Georgia that I'm a consultant for is uh, teaching them how to do accessories for Ford because that's what I've done for so your business has opened other doors for you yes. and where you started out actually physically doing the wheels and running the machines yes. You're not even touching the machines anymore. Uh-uh. I don't even go to the business very much anymore. To be honest with you, I call in and say, hey, guys, how's it going? Because I've got the right management st- uh, staff in place that are passionate about what they do. Okay, They have the determination because they love the business as much as I do. Okay, that, You see what I'm saying? And that's allowed me to step away and do some other things that I'm passionate about. Now. And isn't that the goal of every that business owner? Yeah. Where And also, I yeah. own a recording studio. It's uh, Tributary Studios, www.tributarystudio.com, if you want to check it out. We do Christian music, uh, local Christian artists. Um, I work for Ford as, a, uh, as uh, an accessory consultant. If you want to go to the accessory uh, page, it's on Facebook. It's accessories.ford.com. That's, uh, that's what we're doing there for, for Ford Motor Company. So. What don't you do? <laughs> Waste his time. I, I don't watch a lot of TV, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, that's it, and there's a good reason for that. That's why you're successful. Uh, Tim Gowans, Metro Wheels and Accessories, among other things. And Rick Crane with Breakthrough Business Solutions. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining Thank us here you. on Gwinnett Business Radio. been Thank a lot you. of fun. Thank you for having us. Wow. Of, yeah. I, I, halfway, I halfway think that last question you asked was, as much for you and me as it was for the, our listeners. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like if we can you know, let people listen to this show and go away feeling like they've learned something, oh, they learned we've something done today. our job, I think we've accomplished that today. Yeah, if, you're, if you didn't learn something today, you were listening to somebody else's podcast, right. not this one. And it, right. it wasn't from us. It never is. It's always from the guests. Abs- a- absolutely. We're here for the, for the comedy, and sometimes I'm not even sure about that. Okay. A bell ringing deck. If you uh, p- please subscribe to our show, we're on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all those podcast platforms out there. Also, please follow us on social media, Gwinnett Radio X. We're on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff as well. I want to thank Amanda for producing the show behind the scenes, and thank you, Stephen. Are we still doing the deal that if they can find a podcast platform that we're not on, they win the fact that we're going to put our podcast on that platform? Sure. We're on all of them. If if you say so. Okay. Enjoy your movie, by the way. I'm going to. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. And thank you to our listeners. We'll see you next time here on Gwinnett Business Radio.